While the North freezes, Florida bakes. We'll have a report. We'll also tell you what one school is doing about the cost of a college education. Law enforcement agencies are getting some much-needed help, and we'll meet a former Miami Dolphin who gave up pro football for teaching. And in sports, the Hurricanes have three new All-Americans. You'll find out about the ten most eligible bachelors, and we'll go in search of a voice for a famous cartoon character. Stay with us. The Update magazine is next. Scott Atwell is now joining us for the sports, and Scott, we've got some All-Americans to talk about. Well, the University of Miami has always had a reputation for producing All-Americans, even during the lean years of the 70s, where the team record didn't indicate that type of performance. But now it's refreshing to see both the team and the individuals doing well and both getting equal national attention. So it came as little surprise, and after Miami's banner football year of 1981, that the national postseason honors would be so generously bestowed upon certain hurricane standouts. This season marked only the second time in the school's 55-year grid history that three Hurricane players were named to first-team All-America squads in a single season. Chuck Foreman, Tony Christiani, and Burgess Owens were the last trio to be so honored, that back in 1972. No questions about this year's selections. Number 31 in the Miami Divas of backfield, Fred Marion. He was named to Kodak and UPI's first teams while also participating in both the Hula and Senior Bowl All-Star Games. Here's Fred in action right now. Two interceptions out in Hawaii highlighted Marion's participation in that Hula Bowl All-Star Game. Big Lester Williams, who came to the Hurricanes four years ago as America's finest prep prospect, finally got around to doing what everyone said he could. Walter Camp, UPI, and Football News selected him to their first team units. Williams was also featured in the Blue-Gray East-West Shrine and the Olympia Gold Bowl All-Star Games. Here's Dan Miller, Miami's all-time record place kicker. He was selected by Football News to their first team. Miller is the first kicker in UM history to ever attain All-America status. That Football News publication also selected UM's Howard Snellenberger as their National Coach of the Year, an honor certainly well-deserved. So after an All-America campaign like 1981, what can the University of Miami Sports Information Department look forward to next season? What about quarterback Jim Kelly for the 1982 Heisman Trophy Award? The big push has already begun. Well, University of Miami athletic officials say it's going to cost you one more dollar per home game to see the Hurricanes in action at the Orange Bowl next season. Ticket prices will be hiked from $10 to $11 for each of UM's six home games with the exception of the October 30th date with rival Florida State, which will carry a $15 price tag. Meanwhile, Dr. Harry Malios, UM's Director of Athletics, also announced the finalization of that 1982 schedule. The Hurricanes will drop Air Force in Wyoming and add an away trip at Louisville on October 2nd and a home date with Cincinnati on November 27th and the season's final week of regulation play. One of the bigger surprises on this year's sporting front has to be the success of Miami's women's swim team, who, despite their youth, have vaulted to an impressive 5-1 record. UM Update's Dan Pratt has this report. Dan Pratt, UM Update Sports. The Miami men's swim team, preseason ranked number 10 by Swimming World Magazine, were off to a 2-1 and one start at the time of this taping. The University of Miami women's basketball team trying to defend their state title didn't add to that cause last week as the Hurricanes dropped an 82-73 decision to rival Florida up at Gainesville. Gwen Harris was a leading scorer for Miami with 24 points. The Lady Canes now stand at 12-5 on the year. So Dennis is going to cost you a buck more to watch the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl this year, but I think it would be worth it. They certainly put on a good show. Well, they certainly do, but uh, it's not going to cost you more if you're a UM student. You nope. still get in free with your valid UM ID. That's doesn't? right. That's your uh, uh, your ticket in. That's right. <laughs> okay. What about uh, the season tickets? Now, how much have they gone up? There wasn't there a priority seating arrangement? They were going to uh, institute a priority seating arrangement, but uh, after further investigation, the board of trustees decided it was not wise to do that this year. So they're just going to put that on the back burner right now. And the, if you buy a season ticket, uh, you get one dollar off for each home game, so that's a better bargain if you're going to go for the, the whole season. Mm -hmm. So um, that was quite a controversial issue. You think we'll hear more about it in the future? I think you might hear about it when, once the uh, 
new stadium is built. They're looking at the uh, Tropical Park site right now. And I think once a smaller stadium is built and the ticket demand grows higher, then they uh, might be able to institute that priority seating. But I don't think it's going to happen in the 76,000-seat Orange Bowl. Okay, thanks a lot, Scott. Okay. And that's this week's UM Update. We'll return in two weeks with another edition to update you on what's happening. Until then, for Dennis Scott and the entire UM Update team, I'm Lois Slipset. We'll see you in two weeks.